How would you like to film high quality YouTube videos without the expensive camera gear? And you can do it all on your phone. Today, I'm going to show you arguably the best filmmaking app on the market and how to use it to get great video. There are other apps out there that deliver quality, but they can cost you as much as $156 a year. However, today's app, the Beastcam app, leads the industry in both price and quality. You may have heard recently that one of the other apps, Filmic Pro, has made a change in their business model and their pricing strategy, and it's really left a few people a bit angry. And to tell you the truth, the Beastcam app is just as good an app, if not better. I have five apps on my camera, and Beastcam is my go-to filming app. It's a beast of an app. So we're going to look at five areas that will get you on your way to filming better videos quicker and easier. Also, be sure to stick around to the end. I'm going to show you exactly how I set up my studio to film videos on my iPhone and some extra equipment you might not want to miss out on. When it comes to video quality, the default app on your phone just doesn't cut it. You definitely need an app like Beastcam to unlock the potential hidden within your phone's camera. Here are a few recommendations when filming YouTube videos. The first thing I do is come over here on the left, click on this square icon, and we have resolution, frames per second, and bit rate. I always suggest filming in 4K. The best frame rates for YouTube are usually 24, 25, or 30. 24 is more cinematic, while 30 gives you more of a hyper-realistic look. And as far as bit rate goes, you could go all the way to beast, but it really isn't necessary Necessary, you're not going to see that much of a difference. So I prefer the sweet spot on high, that way I save a little bit of data. Now, since I'm filming in 24 frames per second, I'll click down here on shutter speed, and I'm going to want to double that to 48. Then let's go to ISO. ISO is usually best as low as possible, somewhere between 100 to 200. And then finally to white balance right here, I suggest scrolling here. That way you lock your white balance. You don't have any issues while filming. You can get your own copy of my 11 Beastcam settings you should be using by clicking on the link in the description below. Just click that link to get your free PDF. That way you don't have to memorize or write any of these things down. Good audio quality is just as important as good video quality. Just listen to what it sounds like when recording without an external microphone. Right now, I'm only recording with my iPhone's internal microphone. How does that sound compared to this? This is being recorded with an external mic just like the rest of my video. You definitely want to get yourself an external microphone and you can get a really inexpensive lav mic like this Boya lav mic. This mic cost me around $17 and it sounds just as good as some of the more expensive mics that I have. And what I like most about a lav mic is it's inexpensive and no matter what you do when you move your head side to side, it still keeps the quality of sound. So if we click on our microphone icon right here, we have these options. At the top, we have our microphone, and if there's an external microphone, you'll be able to control the volume up here. Right below that is our input, and that's from the internal microphone on your phone, and we're gonna leave that alone. Remember, we don't get much quality out of that. Right below is format, and we have three options, AAC, PCM and AIFF. Both PCM and AAC are YouTube accepted, but PCM takes up more data and is best used if you plan to make a significant adjustment to your audio in the editing process. AAC takes up less space and may work better if you're not going to make alterations. I'm personally using AAC for this video. And at the bottom, we have sample rate. Now you may have more options than I do. At the moment, only 48. You possibly might have 44.1 kilohertz. If given that option, it's really more commonly used, while 48 kilohertz is more for professional audio production. Talking head shots like this are great, but overlapping B-roll shots really helps you to get the point across and keep your audience's attention. Also, try to get a few wide shots medium shots, and close-ups. It's most common to film in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second in order to get slow motion. Presets are a time saver. Once you've dialed in your settings, whether that be for talking head videos, B-roll, or anything else, you'll want to save each of those as a preset, and Beastcam has a fantastic preset function. 
In order to save a preset, just go into your display, click on this P button at the top right for presets, and you have all of your settings here on the left, and that's fantastically useful. In order to save, just click the Save button at the top left, give it a title, and you're good to go. Later, when you want to apply a preset, just choose your preset down here. For example, I'll choose my Studio Blue, click on that, click Apply at the top left, OK, and you're ready to go. Some of the more helpful functions I use often start with visual analytics. With visual analytics, it's just something that you've got to see. So let's just go up here to the top right, click on VA for, of course, visual analytics. And our first option on the left is focus peaking. We click on that and we click on our focus option down here at the bottom left. As we scroll in and out of focus, out of focus here and in focus here, when we have something in focus, we'll get these green highlights. That can really come in handy when you're working on a small screen like your phone. Now, if we get into exposure, we'll click on our exposure option at the bottom right here, our VA. And then instead of focus peaking, let's go to zebra stripe. And as we scroll up and down with our exposure wheel, as we get underexposed, the zebra stripes turn blue. And as we go to the opposite spectrum, we overexpose things, zebra stripes turn red. Ideally, you want to get as few red stripes and blue stripes as possible. So if we get right about here, that looks pretty good. And just click the Z again to go out. The third option here is false color. This is really interesting. Again, as we underexpose everything, things turn blue. As we overexpose things, we have somewhat green, yellow, and red. Red is overexposed, yellow is slightly overexposed, but green is just about right. So we want to put things in green as best possible right about here. And I'll click out and it looks pretty good. Now, what I suggest you do is click on auto. That way, anytime you're adjusting exposure or focus, you'll automatically get either your focus peaking or with exposure, zebra stripes. Okay, let's go to vlog mode right now. Behind this door is my mini studio in my mini room. Let's take a look. So, if we take a look around here, we've got a small area. So, small areas you can do a lot with. This light behind me, we have a key light right here. Then, I have a little tripod, just the, the cheapest you could possibly get. Up here, we've got my fill light at the top. And we have my background lights right here. And we can turn them off and on. We can change the colors. We can control the intensity with this remote control. Have my tripods right here and my little accent light right here and really that's about it as you can see you really don't need a lot to make your own personal YouTube studio but to get the most out of Beast Cam, it's best to see everything this app has to offer that's why you should click on this video right here where I go over every setting the Beast Cam app has think of this video as your very own Beast Cam master class